Well, every battle's won in Washington and Washington. My brothers and my sisters marching at my side. We're marching through the fields where a million Nazis died. You're bound to lose. You fascists bound to lose. I have a fretless and a fretted banjo, I guess one of each, and uh, other than a bunch of chords or slides, what makes a song good for fretted versus fretless? In other words, how do you decide which songs to play fretless? Well, Curtis, great question. Um, for me, it's not so much a matter of um, am I going to play a certain songs on a fretless or not. I don't I currently own a fretless banjo. Um, uh, I, the only ones I ever have now are the ones that I make, and when I make them, I only have them for a couple days, and I, I, I sell them, I get rid of them, uh, pretty quick. So the only two banjos that I have right now are these two fretted ones, but if I had a fretless one, and I, I did for years, hanging on the wall, um, and I, I didn't, there weren't specific songs that I would, that I would play on it, I would try to play everything, like I think that everything I play, I want it to be rooted enough in our um, more ancient traditions that I want it to trans be able to translate onto, onto between fretless and unfretted a lot. Well, now that being said, that piece of music I was just playing... That kind of stuff, I mean, I'm not going to do that on a fretless banjo. It's going to sound like crap. I wouldn't be able to do it. So when it comes to stuff that's up past the fifth fret, I'm not doing it on a, on a fretless banjo. Why bother? To me, that's more, that's more mo like a more recent modern part of our tradition, which is, which is a great, beautiful thing, but it's not for the fretted stuff, not for me. Uh, so that's that. Um, but when it, how do you decide which songs to play fretless? I mean, there's some songs that are just going to sound better on a fretless banjo. And for me, to my ear, that would be songs in which you can incorporate lots of um, slides. Because uh, to me, that's what makes the fretless banjo, like, mwah, that's what makes it worth still having fretless banjos, is the slides that you get out of them. And I've discussed this in an earlier video, where the slides that I get on this great old Wayman, uh, even though it's from 1900 and it's a pretty old instrument, it's got these frets, and I don't like that, I don't like that sound. So on this, I'll make slow slides, you know. Um. So all those were short slides that I emphasized. Anyhow, I don't want to get into that. There's an earlier video on slides, and we can get deeper into that uh, if you guys want in the future. Right now, I'm going to get on to Curtis's next question. Uh, okay. Also, how do you decide uh, where or how to embellish tunes past their bare bones? I can play from tablature fine, but I don't seem to be able to take that next step toward making the music my own and understanding what additions are appropriate where. Hmm. Well, that's of course, that's up entirely up to you. Uh, I tend to be more, I, maybe I'm more conservative or maybe a minimalist more. So I like to do as few embellishments as possible. So let's say, the, like, like, let's do like uh, going across the mountain. Going across the mountain, oh, fare thee well. I'm going across the mountain, oh, fare thee well. Hear my banjo tell, rather. Anyhow, so that's the bare bones of the song. Um, and how do you embellish that? You know, like, you do hammer-ons and stuff like that, but do it as little as possible. Let's do it out of the overhand style. This overhand style is great for not embellishing at all, and still getting a great, 
old-timey, traditional, beautiful sound. So going across the mountain, uh, overhand style with like zero embellishments. That sounds great with no embellishments. So if you can do that smoothly and nicely and you know the same way and stuff every time, then you're already doing great. So if you want to embellish it just minimally, so. That's how I would probably play it, and that's, I would say, minimal embellishments. And also, I want to point out, you guys, people have mentioned on, on YouTube, you're watching me here, usually, um, there is a little machine watch cog either in the left hand corner or the right hand corner below the screen if you click on that little machine cog you click on that you can do stuff like slow these videos down to half speed three-quarter speed and you can you can do stuff like that so i encourage you all to do that too and I, I will we will continue to share videos with you all that are slowed down and up close uh, we're going to take one more question here from curtis before i let you all go for a little bit um, <clears throat> lastly, how do you decide when to play two finger uh, up picking versus claw hammer? Okay, thanks so much. Looking forward to what's to come. All right, Curtis, how do I decide whether what what to choose? Um, I mean, that's again, that's up to you, right? Some songs will just sound better. Some songs you want to you want to do a lot of drop thumbing and stuff. Um, and if you're doing a lot of drop thumbing, well, you're not going to really, I don't like to do a lot of up picking. Up picking, um, uh, when you're doing up picking is great, but you can't really, drop thumbing when you're up picking, when you're doing upstroke stuff, it's, it's difficult. And it kind of interrupts your, your, your game. You can do it in some songs, it's probably great, but to me it's just like cumbersome. So I don't drop thumb when I up upstroke or up pick, because that would look like this. It would interrupt the, the cool, what's cool about upstroke is... Is that repetitive like bronco charge sound you get. So some songs you're you're gonna want to up pick and upstroke, but some songs you're not gonna want to up pick. You're gonna want to finger two or three finger pick them. If you guys can three finger pick, that's awesome. I never figured it out. We'll talk about it later. And then the the claw hammer, the, what I would call the overhand style or stroke style. Well, some songs just sound better with that, and it's really just up to you. I don't give a damn which style you use to play the banjo. I don't care if you use Scruggs style to play it. That's fine. Scruggs was a folk and he came up with a with a style. He was just a dude. Anyhow, I, this is good. Video is getting too long guys. This has been a pleasure. Thanks Curtis. You had some great questions and I'm going to get to the rest of y'all soon. Thanks again y'all for watching. I'll see you later.